we know. Okay, so thanks very much for coming along. And today we are gonna share with you and hopefully inspire you to do some, um, to make some really great, um, like Sam, you know, lunchbox type things, but they could, they're lunchbox for, for kids. Then uh, some of them are a lunch, you know, a lunchbox for adults. And as far as I'm concerned, I think anything like that, it's portable. So, you know, it's picnic stuff as well. All right, so first of all, um, I just want to ask you if you could put yourselves on mute, um, which is just down the bottom probably of your screen on the left hand side, you can just mute yourselves if you're um, just watching. However, we do have a chat box and we would love you to post any questions in the chat box as we're going along and we will do our best to help you. So my name is Mandy. I am um, team leader for the Multicultural Mixers and you'll see as we go along that we are very multicultural. So today you're gonna to see me, I'm originally, well, I am still English, part of my, <laughs> was born and bred there. Um, Keisha is from Poland, Irene has Greek heritage, Boone is from Singapore and Pearl is um, from India. So that's why, that's where we got our name from. And we all bring different, we've all got different areas of expertise, which we're gonna share with you today. Um, as we're going along, if you think it's fun and you'd like to come and join us and be part of the multicultural mixes, it doesn't matter if you're the same, um, come from the same background as somebody else, we'll still welcome you in the team. Then um, just have a think about that and contact your consultants um, after the class. Uh, however, I think we might as well get going. And the first person we're going to is Pearl. So we'll head over and see. Hi everyone, welcome to me. And today I'm going to make a cheese. So I haven't made it, but with cookie dough, can't go wrong. So let's start cooking. So preheat the oven to 180 degrees. Place 12 silicone cups. I have put them in the muffin tray. I'll show you because I'm on a different camera. It's asking me to put 100 grams of cheese. My cheese, and it's a little over 100 grams, so it's fine. Forty grams of Parmesan cheese. That also is a bowl. Insert next for ten seconds on speed nine. I'll just show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like in 10 seconds. And can I just add that the best thing about that is, um, you know, when you go to the supermarket, you buy ready grated cheese, it has anti-caking agent in it. And this doesn't have any of those nasties. So it's an amazing thing. You can just have the cheese in your fridge, cut off what you need. And, um, you know, it's going to be nice and fresh with no extras. And it smells really good as compared to what you buy as well. So place it in a bowl. I've skipped the next step because I've already done this and kept because I had to boil the quinoa, steam the quinoa for 20 minutes, which I did, don't want, so I've already missed. Um, there was a really good little tip there, back there, those um, Pearl, with the simmering basket and using the spatula as a handle. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, that, that's all right. I was just going to, we might show it to them a bit later on. Yeah, I did. Now I have to put some springs of flat parsley and spring onions, so which I have put in the bowl. Oh, 
insert the measuring cup for three seconds on speed five. So everything is set. You just go for the set on your uh, thermomix. Scrape down. Next, 130 grams of zucchini. So which I've cut here. For three seconds on speed five. Hundred grams of ham. That also is little over. That's one advantage with your thermal mix. You want to control the ingredients you put. Instead of ham, you can put even the leftover chicken or put mince or whatever you put to eggs. These eggs are from my chickens. Pinch of sea salt, skip that ground pepper. Next, reserved cheese. Next, reserved cooked quinoa. I'll just show you the. This is the quinoa that I have cooked. And once it's cooked and it's in the, it's cooking there, you just use your spatula when it's hot so that you don't burn yourself. And you use your spatula as a handle and you take it off. This is the quinoa. And I'll go back to my... Next. And on reverse, it's already set. Reverse is set for me. 10 seconds. I'm just going to just mix it up. And speed four. And now I'm going to put them in the muffin tray, which I already set up and kept. This is the rose gold muffin tray, which I got from the mix shop. So this is what I'm doing. And then I'll put it in the oven and in 20, 25 minutes, it's done. Beautiful. So, Thanks, Pearl. Yeah. Um, and I love the, the little silicon things you've got on your rose gold tray. It makes it so easy. You don't have to grease anything, do you? Yeah, true. <laughs> All right. We're going to move over to Irene next, and she's going to make some bread dough. I thought it was me, uh, Mandy. Yeah, I thought it was Keisha. It is. I've got it wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no problem. Hello, everyone. My name is Keisha. I'm making today the the leash peston uh, nuggets. And if you have a look, I've got it on the screen. And what we're gonna do, we start cooking. But before we start cooking, we go to the, um, like, 
Are we gonna go to the tips? Uh, because I'm gonna make my own means instead of using a pre pre byte means. And in the hints, we've got different ideas where you can help yourself uh, sometimes before recipe. If you read through, it helps you to to make it um, more efficient recipes. And in the in the tips, it says. To make your own chicken means, you can partially freeze 500 gram chicken breast or tight meat, which I have tight meats, cut into three centimeters cubes and place, um, it says here, place 250 partially frozen chicken into mixing bowl and turbo for two seconds one time. But we have a better option, which is on seven seconds. So we're gonna go, we can go to seven seconds. Speed seven. So I place the chicken mints, uh, chicken cubes uh, that are partially frozen into the bowl. and I place the lid and for seven seconds, I'm gonna mince it on speed seven. So this is how it looks. It means so Thanks, Coach. I, I love that because no extra bits and pieces that you might end up and uh, it's you can have an organic chicken or whatever you choose to have in your means um drumsticks meat taken off the drumsticks and as much fat as you like as well beautiful thank you now we are going to irene and she is going to make the dough good job i got these guys to keep me on track i tell you Hey everyone, um, Happy New Year. So good to be back this year. So we've got lots of exciting classes coming up. Today I am making pizza pockets. So I'm going to jump straight in to our uh, camera. Okay, pizza pockets. Goodness, what's happened to my camera? Never mind. I'm looking a bit narrow today. How bizarre. Never mind. Okay, pizza pockets. So we're using um, 220 grams of water. Now, in the recipe, it talks about heating this through. So you'll see this in a moment. I'm just going to weigh in my 220. Close enough. Oh, actually, no, I'll take it. It's a good thing with this. If you do overfill it, don't worry about it. Just tip it out. Close enough. Okay. Um, it's asking for sugar. I don't put sugar in my dough. You can if you want to. It actually affects the colour of the dough and the flavour, but I'm leaving it out. I'm using some instant yeast. I use my, I use um, this Lowen brand. Um, and basically I don't worry about the use by date. Just pop it straight into the freezer. So putting two teaspoons in. Insert the measuring cup and it asks you to basically warm that through for two minutes. Now, a couple of things. I'm using instant, instant dried yeast. Instant dried yeast doesn't need to be soaked in the water to allow it to activate. It basically can get, can get, dust, it can get mixed in straight away. I've used tepid water. So that's basically just taking the chill out. So I can literally bypass this two minutes and go straight to my next step. So 400 grams of baker's flour. Um, you can find, I use, um, Wholemeal baker's flour, you can find it at most supermarkets now, just to be a little bit healthier than your traditional white or bleached uh, baker's flour. And we're putting in a splash of olive oil. Um, salt was mixed in with my flour, and then basically pop your Pop your lid on and knead that for two minutes. Just turn the dial. And go straight back to Keisha. Back we 
you, um, Keisha, and our ring. Yeah, thank you. I'm just drying up the bowl which I washed from the mints. I'm just putting it all together now. Just a sec. So really important when you take your, but you don't need to take your bowl apart every time you wash it, but I always do when I've done meat. Um, but really, really important, you put it back together before you put it back into the housing of your Thermomix, okay? Otherwise you've got Make a hole sitting there. Dry. Yeah. Yeah, and your pins are dry, absolutely. Sorry. Oh, okay. That's all done. So we can go back to the recipe and I've got it in my wick and we start cooking. So we have um, um, we put the lid and we're gonna measure the breadcrumbs, which asking for gluten-free rice crumbs. So it's good because, uh, so I'll tear the scales, which is fantastic function. So you don't need to have scales in your house. So it's about 118 grams. So I'll put aside this. And asking me for garlic. Eighty gram of pine nuts, which I've got a little bit over. Fresh baby spinach, sixty gram, which is about two handfuls. Twenty gram of olive oil. which is not much and a little bit of sea salt. And we're gonna put on lid with the measuring cup and we're gonna blend it for 10 seconds on speed five. We're gonna scrape the, the sides of the bowl. And this is all the mixture that's chopped for us, the nuts and the pine nuts and that spinach. And it took only 10 seconds. And asking for the means that are means. That's the means. Vegetable stock, which is on a cookie dough, and it's the first dish that you make when you purchase the uh, the uh, the thermomix, which is great uh, for using in stocks for soaps and sauces and coconut cream, about 40 grams. Uh, I made this a couple of days before and I put a bit too much of coconut cream. So the mixture was a little bit runny. So make sure that you've got the exact amount of the coconut cream. And we put the lid on. And on 10 seconds on the reverse on speed.
and that mixture come along like this. And I'm gonna transfer into the bowl and create with one tea, tea, teaspoon, two, tea, two teaspoon size um, nuggets. So I'm gonna cram it and dip and fry it in a coconut oil. Looks a lot nicer than um, the Maccas or um, something like that. Oh <laughs> yeah, What's definitely. KFC where they make chicken nuggets, I think. And you can serve it with the salad or with the tomato sauce homemade from Cookie Do or ketchup from Cookie Do. So this is the mixture. And I'm gonna, do you want me to show you how to do it? Yeah, just show us a couple of um, little, just sure. the making them, shaping them, and then we'll leave you to, to do the mini coconut oil, which also sounds uh -huh. delicious. Can you see it? It's a bit awkward. Uh, here we are. So I grab the teaspoon. I made it from one teaspoon last time because I like it small, like a bite size. And, and when you do that with one teaspoon, I mean, what a great little nibble to have if you've got people coming yeah, around yeah. for dinner. So you just cram it like this and it doesn't have to be the perfect, perfect shape or anything because chicken nuggets are usually different size. So they come about 30 out of them. 30 or maybe less or depends on how big size you're going to have. And what I usually do, I fry them until they golden brown and finish up in the oven. Or you can bake them in the oven 180 degrees for 25 minutes to 20. Fantastic. And the other thing I saw someone the other day doing was actually cooking them in a sandwich press. Oh, that would um, be interesting. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Anyway, it's, it's great to have all these alternatives, isn't it? So I'll now fry them. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Keisha. We will go over to Boone now. Mandy, Purito, Purito Irene's. Thank you. I'm here with my sister from another mister, Boone. <laughs> <laughs> um, Boone's going to show us some beautiful pandan, um, pandan um, coconut. coconut scrolls. But before she does that, I just want to show you. So that's my mixture. It literally took two minutes. I just want to show you, anyone who's a bit of a bread baker, I'm going to grab some from underneath. <laughs> okay. um, we've got that gorgeous, we talk about that window, yeah, that you get that, you know, basically need to see through. So you know that that dough has been worked enough um to you know give you a really rise to, to get your dough out rather than putting your hands in there amongst the blades is just to twist the bottom of your blade from the bottom of your bowl and just twist that out and your dough will come out it's been sitting in there a little while you will get a little bit sometimes stuck underneath the blades like that just use the turbo function on your thermomix to get that balance out so there's no waste anyway i'm going to let you burn do her bit um, essentially what i do with this is I shape it into a little bit of a ball. Now you can roll it in our thermo mat, which Boone will show you and explain in a little while, but I'm just using a bowl. So I use a plastic bowl or if you use a glass bowl, you might need to oil it a little bit. I'm um, with a plastic bowl, I find I don't really need to, but you do need to cover this. Um, if anyone used to go to those hotels and you get those shower caps that you never use, they're beautiful over the top of these and you can rinse them. But I'm just going to put some clean film. I don't have any shower caps to use, but um, they do the trick. So all back over to Boo. Zero waste, Irene. I like that. Zero waste. Why not? <laughs> well, I don't suggest you have a shower with them. And then use them <laughs> no, no, no. You, know, you get the idea. Yeah. Um, Boone's going to, I'm just going to change the camera so she can show you the shaping of her, of her dough. Well, if, if, if your shower cap is your head and the bread is going to be eaten by you, who cares? <laughs> okay, now this, uh, the difference, you saw Irene made those, that bread dough. Asian bread tends to be more on the sweet side. So Asian bread recipe, the only different is, difference is you would normally add a bit more sugar to the flour when you're making it. And then you add an egg and some butter. 
So according to the recipe, it will tell you what to do. Now my dough is green color because I added some pandan uh, flavoring, which is the green, green color um, pandan. Right, so this dough is pre-mixed, so I'll just get it out. So to make any scrolls or, or anything for that matter, you really can shape it any way you like. So I'll show you a couple of uh, different shaping ideas, but I will make mainly the scrolls. And these are definitely very handy for school kids. For well, adults, of course, can eat it too. So all it is is you just making roll it up into a triangle shape. You may have to flour it a little bit. And this being pandan coconut, I've got coconut fillings which I made before. And the coconut fillings is literally desiccated coconut with sugar. And I put an egg in it just to hold the coconut in place so that it's easier to spread. If you spread, if you leave a coconut as desiccated, it is quite, quite crumbly and therefore it's very hard to roll up the scrolls as you roll it up. So any amount really, I mean the recipe will tell you. This recipe is on a community recipe. If you just do pandan coconut scrolls, you will see it. But Really, you know, you can do any dough at any amount and you can do any fillings. I mean, what other fillings can we use? Can we add? <laughs> anything, anything. Um, so with, so with scrolls, think about all the things that you that you can buy. Um, if you think about, I guess, obviously, you know, we think about school lunches. Um, you know, our parents are buying the Vegemite cheese scrolls from Baker's Delight. Um, you're buying those pizza, uh, potentially those pizza, pizza combinations, you know, ham and pineapple. Um, I've done scrolls with Nutella and strawberry as a dessert. So the options really are whatever pizza toppings you like, um, you can do this style um, with whatever you, with whatever you or your kids like to eat. So um, my nephew doesn't like, um, you know, he doesn't like a lot of the pizza toppings. You know, his is a simple cheese and tomatoes. So, um, you know, I, I love a margarita style pizza. So mine would be cheese, tomato um, and basil. So... When you're, oh, sorry, Ben. Sorry, go on. No, 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 it's, it's, sorry. So just a little tip when you're doing the scroll like that, make sure this end and that end is a bit free of your feelings. Otherwise, you will get them all over when you're trying to roll it up. So as you roll it up, you just literally do it this way. So you want to flour your mat a little bit. Otherwise, it would be a bit sticky on the mat. As you can see, it is a bit here. I tend to use oil instead of flour. I find flour, if your dough is already a little bit dry, you'll end up drying it out more. So you can use some, you can use some, but um, burns is quite sticky, so the flour is fine. Um, otherwise, if your flour is a little bit dry, just use some spray oil on your mat. Now, I find that sometimes when I roll it up, it gets really fat because it really depends on your dough. And if you think it's too fat, you just have to roll it gently to expand it like that, and then it will just gets thin and long and then it can be used. Now to make it into a scroll, all you do is you just cut them into pieces. I eyeball it, I can't be bothered to measure it. But if you want to be very consistent, you measure every piece by a measuring tape or ruler. And once it's cut up like that, you can put it in, in the, just a plain baking tray or you can uh, put it on, on a, in, in a proper tray lined up like that. I'll bring it over here, lying like that. And then you just spread it up. So I normally try to put the biggest piece in the middle. You can use square T, you can use any T, any shape. Well, she's done this before. Um, so these are our muffin tins. There's lots of sizes on our on our um, on our mix shop. So this is one of our silicone ones. So if you're wanting to do these, are, I guess are small muffin sizes. Um, we've got the the next size up as well. So if you're doing kid sizes, these are actually quite good. Um, 
But similarly, like she's done the sort of same sort of size in that small tin. That, again, that's off the off our um, off our mix shop, but um, just makes it a little bit easier. So Bird's going to show you another style though. That it's one of my favourites. And just another tip on when you're baking scrolls, you do want to place all your little rolls next to each other. They really support each other to rise nicely. Now you can actually do it into actually like a little bun or roll, whichever way you call it. And all you do is you put your fillings in there, scrunch it up. Make sure it's just sealed up nicely by pinching. And then you just roll it with over your hands like that. And then you can put it into either next to each other flat on its own, or you can put it into your muffin tray, like what I really just have shown you. The other way you can do it is, this is Irene's expertise. I'm not very good at it, but I will try. You can leave it plain without the coconut is just as nice, all right? You just want three strips, isn't it? Just need that. Well, three is easier. It's a bit fat strip. Yeah, it's a bit fat, but it's all right. We can stretch it. And Irene does this much better than I do. As well as this dough is a bit soft, so it's not quite the same as if it's a bit of a firm dough. So you bring it over, you kind of plate it. Plate it rather. No, not feeling it. That's why I say on its own, it's just as nice. Because the, the dough is a bit on the sweet side. I believe you are seeing it. You just roll it up and there you go. And then when you bake it, you get nice little patterns. You can see that for this little, I think you can't see. It. Well, we'll um, show you when it's baked. It, it turns into, I guess, very similar to a knot roll, only it's got more folds than a knot roll. But we'll bake those along with the other ones. We're just popping them into the oven too. That's it, Mandy. Thank you. It's over to oh, Irene. Sorry. But um, yes, back to say, Irene. Yes. Yeah, can I just say, um, yes, so grateful to have you guys in the team because you're such experts on this and, and, and you do such a good job. So thank you. Thank you. Oops. Hang on. It's pop screens. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to continue with my recipe um, for the pizza pockets. So essentially, that next step was for me to transfer the dough into a bowl, um, cover it until it basically doubles in size, which takes about an hour. Clean your bowl. Preheat your oven, line your trays ready to go. So I've got all my other ingredients ready to go for my um, pizza pockets. So I'm just grabbing them from the fridge. I've got some, I've used, um, instead of parmesan, I've kind of just used what I've got. I guess we're a bit of a, um, trying to reduce, we talk about zero waste, we're trying to reduce our waste. I didn't have any parmesan in the fridge, but I had some pecorino, so I'm using some pecorino. So no problem there. So I've got some pecorino. I've also got some mozzarella. I'm just popping them all into the bowl. I've cut them into about a one inch cube, um, particularly with hard cheeses. Don't try and put them in much larger. Um, and we're gonna go through this, chop them up. Okay, um, I love grating cheese, can't beat that. Eight seconds, gorgeous, gorgeous, fresh cheese. No anti-caking agents, no nasties um, that you can get in some of the grated cheeses that are in those packets. So, um, and I love this because I don't have to wash the bowl, even better. So I'm not using, um, I'm not using brown onion. Again, I've got some red onion, so I'm just using that. Um, I'm adding in my garlic cloves. Chop those. You can actually hear it's probably done in about a second and a half, so you don't have to wait for it to finish to move to the next step. Nice for me to scrape down the sides. I still can't get away from crying, which is unfortunate. At least my fingers don't smell like onions. Okay. Um, I've got my tomato. 
um, tomato paste. I've got some gorgeous oregano from my mother's garden. Okay, sauce is done. Fantastic. So, mommy, I'm just going to swap screens again. Okay, so that's my sauce all ready to go. Now, I've used a couple of tips. So, I've used, it actually asks you to use um, one tomato. I've used a Roma. Roma tends to have less water, so it's more fleshy than your other tomatoes. So they're definitely my preference for a sauce, um, for any sauce, really. And I'm just going to scrape all this out and onto that same plate. Um, have we got anyone typing into the chat box? What's your favourite pizza toppings? What do you like to use? And um, Boone will yell out. She'll tell me what people are typing. Who's made scrolls? Who's made pizza? What flavours have you made? So you can see how nice and thick that is. And that's what you want. You don't want a really runny paste. So has anyone made calzones, the Italian, you know, I guess pizza pockets, I guess, but the larger size. Anyone make calzone? No one. No one. Very silent group today. Okay. I'm just going to use. So, a couple of tips with our mats. No knives. So, Boone's used the green scraper, which you can get from the mix shop. I have a slightly larger industrial version that I like to use as well. So, I'm, I'm, I'm just using that to keep my beach clean, my space clean. Okay, so here's my dough from earlier. Or I should say one I prepared earlier. And I literally made this for about 10.30, maybe 11, close to 11 o'clock. So in 40 minutes, um, this is double the batch, by the way. So this is double the batch of that, um, of that you know, instead of using 400, I've made, I've made an 800 gram um, batch of um, dough. So this pizza dough is really versatile. I'm not actually going to use it entirely for pizza today. I'm going to make bread from this as well. So one batch of dough, whether you're making scrolls, pizzas, bread dough. And I've used, as I said before, I've used a wholemeal flour, a wholemeal bread flour, so a strong flour, as opposed to using, um, as opposed to using sort of white. So let's talk pizza pockets. Um, that says four... I think it says 40 grams, yep, 40 grams each. Let's see what that kind of looks like. Helps if you have your machine ready to go. I love the scales, they do such a good job. So 40 grams, it's pretty small. I just want to show you what that looks like. In my in my hand so really it's quite a tiny quite a tiny little ball in the 40 grams and the reason you want to use a small a small ball is so that you don't end up with a mass amount of um, dough otherwise you can be quite bready instead of pizza like so in terms of rolling a circle you've got to turn your dough or as I've saw into to Mandy you go so one way, crossways, <laughs> well, I've put glare on it, so it's moving a little bit too much, crossways, and then you go, do your star shape. So you just keep going. Yep, so you can keep a nice circle, which is, which is brilliant. Um, I'm going to stretch it just a little bit more because it's a little bit too thick on the edges. And I can show you another way when we do dumplings and dumplings. Ah, good. 
Moon, birds here, the experts here with the dumplings. We're doing a Chinese class. I'm so excited. Can't contain myself. Okay. So, mixture in the middle. So your tomato through the centre. So, tips. When you're cooking a pizza in the oven, obviously if you've got things that are raw, so capsicums, bacon, um, mushrooms, um, when they're open on the, in the oven, obviously the, that steam's going to come out of them, so any liquid that's in them, it's going to help cook them. Anything that goes into a pizza pocket or a calzone has to be cooked. So I've got some cooked ham and I've thrown up some bacon and Boone was saying um, she wants to eat bacon. So we're going to do some lots of, lots of pizza pockets with bacon there. <laughs> and my cheese. So a little bit of cheese. A little bit of ham. So just make sure whatever goes into it is cooked. So um, if I wanted to do some mushrooms, I would pan fry those off a little bit and, and use some seasoning. So um, mushrooms are great with thyme. In terms of closing it, it literally is just bringing the ends together. It looks pretty perfect, doesn't it? And I use a fork, and this is exactly how we do our beautiful, um, we do something called galitsunya, which are essentially um, our cheese, our cheese parcels. So that's, that's another ingredient that I use here. So that's my pizza pocket ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to make a few, of, a few more of those. Um, we'll bake them when food stuff is ready to rise, and we'll come back and we'll show you how delicious they are. That looks amazing. Thank you, guys. Thanks, um, you know, you, you two have got so much bread making knowledge. There's no one better to, to show us all that. So thank you again. Thank you. All right. Coming back to me. Hang on, I'm just going to turn the speaker. You girls will have to meet yourselves too. Oh, you have. Okay. All right. So we've also got a little bit of baking going on. And um, so what I'm going to do whilst um, the baking's happening is just go into cookie do share my screen with you. I've got the wrong one up, but I'll show you this first then. So our mix shop has a lot of um, beautiful things in it. And I just thought I'd show you a couple of things that are really relevant to, um, to lunches. So collapsible lunch boxes. Now both Irene and I earned these as incentives last month and they're coming on Monday or Tuesday. So we really wanted to have them here to show you sort of in the flesh, so to speak. But I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and they've got this brown lunch box. So we'll just have a little bit of a look in that. Um, what does it say about it? So it looks like a brown paper bag. Keeps your lunches and salads cool with a stylish brown lunch bag. Perfect to take your lunches to school work. Magnetic ceiling makes it easy to open and close whilst keeping your food fresher for longer. Plenty of room to store sandwiches, snacks and drinks, making them perfect for your kids to take to school. So it's a reusable lunch box. box um, and as you would have gathered from the comments that have been made so far um, today, uh, we're all into reusable and zero waste. And the other thing about this, and the same with the collapsible lunchbox, is it folds flat for easy storage. So, you know, say if your kid takes one of these to school with their lunch in, once they finish their lunch, it does not going to take up room in their um, their backpack anymore. So, um, so I think that's a bit of a plus too. Okay. Um, the other thing on here I just wanted to search for was um, I'll see if it's. No, I know what. No, it wasn't that. I was going to go into here and I was going to go accessories, uh, accessories and drinkware. Because there are a few things in here. So look, there's a thermo flask that's actually got quite a wide neck. Um, this Thermomix water bottle, I gave these to our team at Christmas time. They are the best. Um, they keep your water really cool. And um, so a really, you know, Honestly, it doesn't matter how hot the day is, the water temperature of whatever goes in there, it will keep that temperature. We'll obviously keep things hot as well if you want to. And um, we've got smoothie mugs and this drinks tumbler. So just thought there was a couple of things there to show you that could be helpful for lunch for lunches. Um, all right, we're gonna go to cookie do now. So um, on our cookie do, just a really quick little tour. Um, we have, it's gonna show us the latest recipes up here and we have just got a new collection of recipes I'm going to go through here because I, I, I this is the way I normally start so you'll see if I go in from recipes to collections you'll see this is our new um, collection that came out with seven different bread recipes in it so we've got hamburger rolls breads 
Um, that beetroot chia butter looks amazing. The tiger rolls look fantastic. And I don't know anything about the milk bread, but I'm sure Boone does. Um, breakfast croissants. So it's always a good way to see what the latest recipes are. And they do actually um, come up as um, on your, as recipes, you'll see those are the first recipes there. I'm just gonna go quickly, uh, let's just see if the next one I'm gonna rave about notes. Oh yes, here it is. This is the thing that's just totally wowed me, um, is the prepper head layer chicken, eggs and salmon. So it, you can actually cook all these things at the same time and you get a beautiful stock as well. All right, so we'll go back into here. So you might go, okay, we're, we're looking at, um, let's go lunchbox. Haven't tried this. It's just gonna give us some ideas. So we've got some cinnamon buns, one of the ideas. Um, there's some, these are some cold meats and things that you can make, some dips, some cookies. There's a whole lot of stuff that comes up when you put that, um, when you search. So you might want to have a look at the recipe. You might go into your hamburger rolls and have, it gives you all the information here. So it is going to take a little bit of time because you've got to let the, the dough rise. But um, I'm sure Boone and Irene would tell us that you can let your, your dough um, rise overnight in the fridge as well. So you can make that the day before. All right, and we scroll down, we get nutritional value in here, and we've also got tips and tricks. You can store your hamburger rolls in the pantry for two to three days or freeze for up to two months. So I might go, all right, well, actually that looks really good. And I might not be putting them in a school lunch, but they might be great for a picnic. So I'm gonna add that to a collection. And I'm just happen to have a lunchbox collection. So I'll just put it in there. Um, from there, I can also add it to my week. I want to make them on a certain day so I'll just put that in I'll put that in for tomorrow uh, and I can also add it to my shopping list all right so the other thing you can do from um, here is you can add filters so at the moment you can just see we've just got Australia in there if I, we've got 334 results for lunchbox let me get rid of that um, search all right but take that off We've got 2,721 recipes here in Australia. Take off Australia, we've got 66,000 recipes. Now, Google Translate will help you um, have a look at some of these. Obviously, I've got no idea what any of those things say. Um, we, that's what we're looking for, someone Chinese to come and join our team. They can, um, they can help us with that, all right? Okay, so, but with the filters then, I can scroll down here and I can come back in and I'm just gonna add English in as a language. And that shows us we've got 8,317 results. And then I might come back up here. And so we can have a look, um, let's go. We go baking savory and baking sweet because often, you know, those are the sorts of things you're gonna have in a lunchbox. If you've got something you need to use up in the fridge and um, are zero wasters like doing that. So you've got an ingredient, you can type it in there and it will come up with all those recipes. Oops. Um, you can also, I put anything in? No. Oh, put baking powder and I think I might take that one out. Um, all right, you can tag. So if you're gluten-free or dairy-free, you can pop that in there. You can also select by preparation time or total time. Now, total time, I think, is always a great thing. But just remember, I'm, I'm not actually going to add anything in there because remember, we're baking and there may be bread doughs and things which take a while to rise. Portion sizes, ratings. I don't actually worry about ratings because, you know, what? I have cooked so many recipes from here and I've never rated anything. So I'm sure some people do. And you probably wouldn't want to go for the, the lesser rating. But um, I don't think it's a, it's a massive consideration when you're filtering. So I've got... Um, 1,220 results. So then I, now I can have a bit of a look through here and go, well, there you go, vegan brownies. Lemon meringue cupcakes, they look, look a bit fancy for a lunchbox, but they were good for a picnic. And you just go through and you, um, you have a look at recipes if you want to, and you can just add them to your lunchbox collection, your week, your shopping list. But there's, looks like we've got all the sweet baking at the front, but I oh know, here we go. So here we go. There's all sorts of amazing things that you can, you can make in your Thermomix. So let's have a look at the lunchbox collection that I created um, before. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go down to lunchbox. And just show you some of the ideas. So some of these are a bit fancier than others, but here's our hamburger rolls. And I said some of these would be great picnic things. So I have actually done a picnic where I took these, which are just so impressive. Um, it's another thing I've got very excited about. 
So curry chicken salad wraps, that's from our low carb collection. Cake in a jar, fantastic for a picnic. Um, got sausage rolls, brownies. Ah, now I made these this morning and I'll show you those when we um, when I stop sharing my screen. And salads as well. I mean, that, that lunchbox, um, the collapsible lunchbox has two compartments. You could have a salad in one, you could have, you know, play lunch in one and, um, and your lunch in the other. Uh, but there's all sorts of different um, options that you can have. The broccoli and bacon tarts are fantastic as well. Different salads, aren't those beautiful, those vegan summer rolls. The Kamara sausage rolls, keto cheddar. Uh, th th there's just so many different things. Look, here's, a, here's a, um, another sweet type of um, scroll, a wheat and nut and dairy free, free muesli slice. So many different things that you can do. There's the, the nuggets. Um, and I might've gone past the quinoa muffins, but they're here somewhere. Um, this is your, uh, your cho these chocolate cupcakes. You actually make your own um, Nutella with those. Here's the muffins. There's, I must have got, got, got these in twice. Uh, these are also really nice, the spinach and feta muffins. And a lot of them are actually gluten-free. So you can, if you're looking for gluten-free, and if, if something does have nuts in it, you can always um, substitute with seeds. if You don't want the nuts for school. Okay. So what I'm just going to show you is a couple of things um, from another thing from the, from the mix shop is this. Now, this is an older style, but it is for um, like bars. So you can make bars in it. I know the one they've got at the moment, um, they've got now is a little bit, little bit shorter and a little bit fatter, but um, great for making bars. Cracker roller. This is amazing. So you can actually, you end up with crackers this shape. And you basically roll out your dough and it's great for gluten-free. And I know I talk a lot about gluten-free, but I know there's someone else gluten-free on here as well. And um, and I, I choose to eat gluten-free. So this is fantastic. You know, gluten-free crackers can be really expensive. If you want something good quality, you can make them using cracker roller. Um, we've got the spray bottle from the, um, so again, I love this because it's zero waste. I can use this and this is, I've just got olive oil in there and I can spray it. I'm not gonna spray it because I'll spray my screen. But um, instead of having um, one of those, um, you know, those cans, um, this is zero waste. I just um, put my oil in here. Love it, love it, love it. Um, two other things I'm excited. So I'm very excited about that. Very excited about this. This is a thermo jug. I know it's not really relevant, but um, I just thought it was so cool. So I wish I'd actually had it before Christmas, but um, as consultants though, um, we got, um, some of us got hundred dollar voucher um, again as an incentive. And that was one of the things that I bought in the mix shop. And I'm excited because that means if I've got gravy, I can have it on the table. It's not super pretty, but it's not, it's not ugly. So um, I can have that on the table. It's gonna keep my gravy warm and um, for dinner parties and things. So I'm very excited about that. And another thing I was just going to show you is um, you saw Irene's um, uh, the, the muffin um, pan, silicon. They've got quite a few silicon, so you can either go rose gold or you can go to silicon. This is a new silicon tray, so the edges are firm, but you've got silicon in the middle. Remembering you never ever cut on your silicon, never a sharp knife on your silicon, but fantastic for putting things on. Um, you don't have to grease it. Brilliant. Um, sun-dried tomato and prosciutto muffins I'll show you those so those are super quick and again in the whole zero waste thing I didn't have so cottage cheese you need 300 grams of cottage cheese for these and it doesn't taste like cottage cheese I have um, a, a gentleman in the house who doesn't like cottage cheese he's never known that there's cottage cheese in there and when our son was living with us he doesn't eat cheese and he, he loved these so they're not, it doesn't make them cheesy. I did leave off the Parmesan cheese when I made them for him. Um, but they are super easy. But yeah, so the, the, the cottage cheese is available in 250 grams and I need 300 grams. I actually had a little bit of creme fraiche left in the fridge. So I just substituted with 50 grams of um, creme fraiche, which meant I'm using that up and not being left with an open thing of um, cottage cheese. So they are absolutely delicious. Uh, also, um, I have done a little video for these and I'll put that up onto the YouTube channel. Um, just talking a bit about the prosciutto as well. So that's those. Um, but what I'm going to make now is um, the, I make it? I'm making the chocolate sweet potato slice. So a great way to do a little veggie smuggling in your, um, 
you know, in, in something that's chocolate, because we know all, um, all kids love chocolate. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into here. I have put that into my week already. I'm going to find the recipe. I put a couple of other things in here. So the baked pumpkin donuts, that's another way of getting um, some veggies into your kids as well. But we're going to start with chocolate sweet potato slice. All right, and I have done the first bit. So like Pearl, there was a little bit of steaming involved and it didn't seem, um, it's a bit of a waste of time doing that um, in the class. But just a little reminder about steaming. So when you're steaming, just have 500 grams of water or stock in your bowl. And then you have your Varoma sitting on top. So your Varoma sits on top here. Um, for every extra 15 minutes over half an hour, you need to add another 250 grams of water. The recipe, if you're doing guided cooking, will show you that. But um, just a, a little reminder. And the way I do it, I mean, it worked the same way with Irene when she just, um, she had her, she took her bowl off and um, she filled it up with water. But I usually take my bowl off, tear it, tear it. Oh, no, I don't. I just tear it with my, with my bowl on like that. Just tear it, take it off to the um, sink, come back and I'll weigh my water that way. All right. Then I had to place the Varoma in position. 250 grams of sweet potato peeled and cut into cubes and 150 grams of red apple peeled and cut into cubes. Then you secure the Varoma lid and it cooks for 25 minutes, which is why it seemed a little bit of a waste of time to um, do it this morning. Set the Varoma aside, remove the lid and leave the sweet potato apples to drain 10 minutes. All right, empty the mixing bowl, dry the mixing bowl. Preheat the oven, my oven is preheated. Grease and line a square cake tin. Well, I've got, this is a really, really old pan, but it is a great size. And again, um, I have got baking paper in it, uh, but it's been used before, but it was a cake and it's fine. So I do give it a little bit of a clean, but I have a um, container that is full of bits of baking paper that have been pre-used. And I try and get something that's gonna fit my tray. So, this baking paper actually isn't recyclable, so just try and use it until you can't use it anymore. All right, 100 grams of butter cut into pieces. That's going in. Eight pitted medial dates. So those are going in there. Pop the lid on and put the measuring cup in. So measuring cup's going in the top there. 10 seconds, speed six. Well, I don't know if you can hear that, but um, it wasn't. So if you can ever hear that it sounds like the blades are just whizzing around, I'm just going to stop it. I hope it's on the course time, so I'm just going to push it back down again and we'll go again. That'll do. Straight down the side of the bowl, spatula. So I've just literally got in here chopped um, dates and butter. Scrape that down. A little bit sticky. Okay, so it does say add reserved warm potatoes and apples. Okay, and it says tips. So to find the tips, you just go onto your three dots, recipe detail, and you can basically just scroll down here. We'll just find those tips. Where are they? Important the sweet potato apple is still warm, so the butter melts. The residual warmth of the mixing bowl will assist too. Well, I've done it. I actually did this yesterday because I made a batch to show you because it, I didn't want we running out of baking time. But I have just done that a little zap in the microwave, so it is a bit warm. Okay, go back up to the top, continue. And, and if it wasn't um, if it wasn't warm enough, you could always just heat the bowl a little bit. Insert the measuring cup, scroll lid, 10 seconds, speed six. Is another thing you can get from the mix shop, little styling, so it saves getting your your hands all over the, your sticky things. 
all over the um, screen. So there's um, so obviously not quite 100% mixed. So I'll see what it says I'm doing next. And if I need to, I'll go back and I'll just repeat that step. me to blend a bit more so that's good. Other 10 seconds. So as soon as you touch the screen it will stop the noise the sound will stop. So we are we'll blend it up. Two eggs. So I broke my eggs. My mother always taught you taught me not to crack an egg into any mixture I made because you might end up look you know with a bad egg and then you've wasted all the mixture. So zero waste. I know it's very unlikely to happen. It's happened to me once, I think. Then I have um, 80 grams of coconut flour. So these are gluten free as well, and also um, baking powder. So and if you can see, I've got the baking powders there, and that's my coconut flour. Forty grams of raw cacao. It's in here. Forty-four grams of yeah, extra little bit chocolatey. One teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. Now, before Christmas, they had all these sorts of things on special in the supermarket, so I actually picked up one of these. Speed back on. Ten seconds. Speed five. If you haven't got cacao, you can obviously use cocoa. Now it hasn't fully really mixed in. I'm just going to scrape the sides down and I'm just going to give it a little. Got to do it again in a second anyway. So we will. So it's just in there like that. Another 10 seconds. I'm just going to give it a quick little stir because I've still got a little bit that looks a different colour. Can't have kids guessing that we've got anything. Although well, it's funny, when my daughter was at university in Ballarat, I, I, she was a chocoholic. She still is a chocoholic. And I would um, make something, take it up, saying, What's in this one? Black beans? What is it? And she'd always um, be, she'd be right on to me. And uh, now she's actually pretty looking for those sorts of recipes because she's trying to be a bit healthier. All right, so now I'm just going to pop this into my um, tray. It's quite if. Now, always, whenever you're scraping out your bowl, always go in a clockwise direction because then you're hitting the blunt or the, the rounded side of the blades, not the sharp side of the blades. And if you remember earlier, um, Irene was saying about you can get stuff left around the blades. So what I'm going to do is just pop this back on. I'm going to hit the um, get closer. I'm going to hit the, the home button here, and I'm going to swipe here, hit my turbo, and I'm just going to turbo. <laughs> really important when you turbo. You have to get out of that mode, otherwise it will not unlock the lid. So if you just come back in here, back into our recipe, we'll do that before. Let's scrape a bit more out. So can you see that my blades are now clean and I've got more on the outside to scrape? So it's actually quite a sticky mixture, this one. Use fingers, but they are clean. 
saying that particularly for Kelly because some of this is coming over the road later. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm just going to use this one to push it down a little bit. Into the tin. So basically you're sort of flattening it down. I'm not saying this is perfectly flat, but it's it's all right. Okay, now next, scatter two to three tablespoons of chocolate chips on the top. So I've just got these Capri's ones. Nestle didn't have any dark ones and I think the dark are probably better than the um, other. And I'm just gonna push them down a little bit because I. I did actually make some of this because we haven't got time to hang around and watch it bake. So I made some yesterday and I think it's going to be better with them pushed in. So there we go. That's ready to go in the oven. I'll wash my hands a little bit though. And I will bake that um, shortly. So bake for 20 minutes or until just cooked. Allow to cool on the tin for a minimum of 15 minutes and then cut into squares before serving. So I will show you um, the one I made yesterday. So it's a little bit hard to, to see, but there we are. You can see the chop bits on top and I just think it'd be a little bit easier um, to, yeah, that they're less likely to fall off. Actually, no, they're stuck on quite well. So that's that's what it looks like when it's cooked. Before we head back to the others to so you can see what they... Um, the results of, of all their, their hard work. Just going to quickly let you know that anyone decided to purchase um, this month is the barbecue cookbook and also a carry bag. And one of the great things about having a carry bag for your Thermomix is it's um, you can take it on holiday. And for me personally, I'm going, well, why would it be harder to cook when I'm on holiday when I've got a really, you know, something that helps me at home? So that's, um, that's really good. And when you do get a Thermomix, it comes with your basic cookbook. You've got bits and pieces in the back of it here, some really in, um, helpful information, some resources at the back. Shopping functions, this is if you're doing things manually. And it's also got a whole section on steaming as well. So always look at the back of your book. Towards the front, there's also a couple of pages on how to convert your own recipes to Thermomix. And in regards to hosting, so anyone who wants to host a cooking experience or just literally just grab a couple of friends and we come over and we just do a bit of cooking in the afternoon. It doesn't have to be super formal, um, you know, afternoon, morning, evening, whenever it is. It doesn't have to be super formal. However, um, one of the um, extra, well, the extra, it's not an extra, it's an other choice um, at the moment. So we have thermo service, which keep your food warm. We also have the meter plus as a host reward. Um, so uh, and the Meter Plus is a, is a Bluetooth um, meat thermometer and it um, is attached to an app on your phone where you can actually, um, you can see, you can choose how you like your meat cooked and it will tell you when it's done and when to rest it. So that is actually a really fantastic thing. And if you've got a man in your life who's coming up for a birthday, great way to get a really good um, present for them. All right. So we are going to go back to Pearl and Pearl is going to show us her muffins. You're Pearl, on you're on mute. We can't hear you. No, we still can't hear, but show it, show, show them to us. Let's have a look. Yeah, and I know they are absolutely delicious. And you've got a little, a little bit of salad. That's beautifully done. Thank you, Pearl. Oh, and look at them all in there. Wonderful. They're really, they are a fantastic thing to pop in your lunchbox. Thanks, Pearl. Thanks for doing that. Over to Keisha now. Um, which, oh, hang on. Which screen would you like, Keisha? Uh, maybe the phone. This is all the nuggets that I made. 
Oh my goodness. And this is the homemade ketchup that I've made before ages ago. So this is lovely to go with. And I was gonna say leftover coconut cream you can use for curries or the blueberry icing or chocolate buttercream frosting or something like that. And um, they freeze well, of course, because it's meat and there is no, uh, no eggs, no dairy, um, only chicken, I mean, that's meat. And uh, I haven't used the gluten-free rice uh, crumbs, but you can definitely can use it and they will be allergy-free for kids with the allergies. Wonderful, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Kate. And they look delicious. Mm. I've actually got them on my, on my to try list. They're very nice. Good, all right, we're gonna head over to Hi. Oh, Anne's not cooked yet. No. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, I just want to show everyone. So that's the second batch of dough. So it's already proved, ready to go. So when I do bread dough, I guess um, something Mandy mentioned earlier. So once it's had its first rise, I'll knock the air out of it. Um, and that thing goes in the fridge overnight. It has its second rise in the fridge. And then I pull it out in the morning, shape it into whatever I'm going to bake. And that gives me that third rise. Um, the three rise is really, really important um, to give you a really lovely dough that's going to stay softer longer rather than going a bit bricky and a bit tough. And we're going to show you what we've got. Um, they do need a little bit longer to bake, but um, Boone's, they're looking fabulous. It's just incredible. So, so it's a bit like a pull apart. It yes. will be a pull apart. Just needs a bit more colour, not much longer yep. to go. Um, the ones that we put into the little muffin trays are coming along really, really well yeah. as well. Wow. Again, just a little bit more colour. And the pizza pockets are done. So our pizza pockets oh, look. are ready Amazing. to go. So we're going to leave hers in just a little bit longer so they can get some gorgeous colour. Um, but yeah, we're just going to wait for these to cool down. Lunch is served. Yeah, that looks fantastic. Thank you so much, both of you. That's wonderful. All right. Um, okay, so just really to say thank you for coming along. Thanks for um, watching us. And hopefully that will inspire you to um, make some different things. And uh, also just um, a date to save on Saturday, the 6th of February, we are doing a Chinese New Year class. So we'd love to have you along. It'll be in the morning, 11 o'clock. And, um, well, I think it will be. We'll confirm that. I haven't really talked to the rest of the team, I just assumed. Anyway, we will we'll work that out and we'll let you know. And, yeah, so hopefully it's a date on the 6th of February for Chinese New Year. Thanks a lot. Bye.